Zionism, a topic that cannot be avoided <clears throat> if you're going to have a serious discussion about conspiracy theory and world corruption. <clears throat> but when it comes to addressing racism, <clears throat> you have to always remember that it goes both ways. And with most criticisms of racism, the person doing the criticizing of the supposed racist, their actions are never taken into consideration. That's something that's always amazed me about uh, organizations like the ADL that fight anti-Semitism. They refuse to address that Zionism in its most basic form, without even getting elaborate about anything of their doctrine or their pursuits, is racism. It is a international It's an international network of people that only care about Jewish people. That is racism. Now, even if they didn't kill Palestinians, even if they didn't confiscate everyone's property and decimate entire cultures, just only caring about your race and going about your life and your business only caring about your race you inherently do negative things to other races. So even if they don't say a word, they're still being racist. And that's what's amazing about it. I still try to be respectful. Uh, people ask me if I'm Jewish, and I've, on some of my videos, I, I've said so. But... I don't know how to define that word. I don't. Uh, oh my god, it's hailing out now. <laughs> no wonder I heard that cat screaming. Ah, hail. Pretty sure I'm going to call this video Zionism, the Tears of God. Or Zionism and the Tears of God. Hail. It's been raining here all day where I am. This is a topic that is so important. I spent a lot of today while it was raining out reading on a section of Zionist history that I was not clear on to the details. And of course, as usual, I don't, there's water coming through a crack in my basement. Uh, and as usual, it is so elaborate. And not to say to their credit, but to the amazing reality of the situation, whenever you're dealing with Jewish history after 1400, these glaring moments of accomplishment and the swindling and tricking of everybody else by a small group of people. But, you know, there, that's the power of racism. Loyalty. The powerful effect of their racism is making other people feel guilty and getting them to fight about their situation and getting them to not be unified and fighting. Because unification of the other races against them, then it's over with. Can you imagine if the Asians woke up and joined with the Arabs and then the Europeans came in and then... Uh, you know, we nicely went over to the Native American reservations and uh, explained that uh, Jewish men exclusively sabotaged all of their communities by giving them whiskey, which they knew had an extremely adverse effect on their men mental faculties because they had no alcohol in their history. And their, their, their genetics, their bodies, just, it was too brand new. Alcohol had been in generation after generation of all the other races. But the Indians, it hit them hard, made them nuts. All those crazy raids, and when the Indians really started to do horrible things, they were drunk. And they were sabotaged into that. And whenever they were run off a piece of land, you know who got the land? 
Yeah. Or you get in real trouble if you talk about um, the Jewish role in uh, the African slave trade. They point out, well, here was a Christian that uh, that was the captain of this slave ship, and all the no, no, no. There are documents, and it's it's exclusive. I mean, they they owned the ships, they ran the business, and yeah, they tried to make it look like it was jointly a Christian thing. And yeah, Christians were not guilty by any means; they weren't saints. But a lot of them did what they did because of bribes. In the early days of the United States, one of the main bribing factors that the Jews had was gold. Like they had gold, hidden. Like hidden gold. When paper currency started to come in, there was just more of a, an appeal of someone paying with gold. And that's what the Jews would do. And that was an old thing. They had been uh, robbing the Spanish in the Caribbean and getting the gold from the galleons that, that ripped off the Aztecs. And they do a real interesting thing. They have all these small tin coins and they'd melt the gold down and then wrap them around, make counterfeit coins onto the tin so that they would triple their money. <clears throat> they did that for 200 years. And they secretly gave it to all the Jewish businessmen on the East Coast. And they all worked together. It was the loyalty. And they would always have more money than everyone else because of this fraudulent way of doing the coins back in the day when you really couldn't test for that kind of thing. And they'd laugh about it. There's uh, Jewish... <clears throat> there are Jewish books that are printed only for Jewish people, exclusively printed to be given to the special higher-ups in the Zionist League. But occasionally, someone will get a hold of one. There's not many printed when they come out with one of them. But it's usually... They're made so Jews know their true history to preserve that. They don't want the world to know it, but they want the Jews to know it. But eventually, you know, one of their daughters will get a hold of one that their dad had and they show it to their boyfriend or something. Something real th crazy like that. And it, one gets stolen or something. You know, that's how the Protocols of Elders of Zion came out because you know, some Jewish man got robbed or something and they grabbed the books. But, of course, they call it a forgery when there's no such thing as a forgery that's... If anything, it's... What would you call... Whatever. Call it an imposter or something. Well, like I was saying before, people ask me if I'm Jewish. I don't practice Judaism. I'm very familiar with all of the tenets of Judaism. I have some relatives that are Jewish. Uh, great-grandparents and a, and, and, and a grandparent. That's the extent of my Jewish history. So I'll admit it. Um, like 30 percent, 40, I don't know. But you gotta, you gotta understand what you're talking about when you want to be hateful against Jewish people. I mean, get it straight. If you're gonna do this, if you're <laughs> gonna do this, the one thing you can't do is sound like a moron. Okay, what you hate is the Zionist crimes, the criminal Zionism that's laid down first in the Talmud, no, first in the, the really exclusive laws of Moses in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, then it's expanded upon as a racial supremacist dogma in the ta Talmud, then it turns into a worldwide attempt at domination laid down in the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. It's the same message in the middle books of the Torah. The Talmud's huge. It's, it's all about kill the goy. It's all about how the Jews are the only real men and everybody else is cattle. It's just ex exclusively like that in the Talmud, page after page after. There's just no doubt about it. And people don't realize that the Bible is a Jewish book. You know, it's... Gonna, it's put out there as if that God is interested in all of humanity. No. That God in the Old Testament makes it very clear that he only cares about the Jewish people. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says that. And he tells them to go slaughter anyone who isn't. 
a, a follower of that religion. He says, go smite the Hittites, go smite the Jebusites. I abhor those people. But when Jesus came along, it all gets blurred. And the Christian priests always tried to keep the Bible from the general public. You know how it was illegal to own a Bible? Well, that was the reason. You didn't want people to read those middle books. Those, those verses were never, ever spoken in the cathedrals. It's always the good stuff and the do this or else, give us money kind of thing. <clears throat> You'd be surprised how long Jews behind the scene have controlled the Catholic Church. You'd be really surprised. It's been a long time. But there are still small in numbers. I don't know what they are in world population, but in America it's like 2% or so. So those Occupy people, when they're screaming about, we are the 99%, to hell with the 1%, you break it down, the 1% is the male population, is the Jewish population. And <laughs> they don't. Well, I know I should just do a series on specific parts of Zionism, because these videos go too long. But there's so much to it. What I read today was about the Civil War. <clears throat> I should just do a video about the Jewish role in the Civil War. It's amazing. The cotton smugglers and, the, and all, the, all the people that were involved in the slave trade and the cotton trade that were financed by the Rothschild Bank in, in England. All a Jewish operation and they caused the Civil War. The man that shot Lincoln was a Jewish and he was paid to do it by the Rothschild. And it was because Lincoln tried to say no to the debt that he owed the bankers in Europe for the beginning of the war, and when he started the greenback currency. And that's why they killed him. <clears throat> it wasn't because some southerner just hated him because he freed the slaves, because <laughs> the slaves weren't really freed, and they have yet to be freed. There's a guy on the internet now, <clears throat> what's his name? Um, Frank Weltner, he runs Jew Watch and Zionist News. It's a little alarming how old he's looking. He's, he might die soon. Um, he's aged a lot in the last 15 years. 15 years ago he was in uh, a Jewish documentary on the protocols of learned elders of Zion. <clears throat> and he's been running Jew Watch for, ever since the internet started. And he never says anything insulting, he just puts out there the truth of the, the crimes and the cover-ups and the conspiracies and just the really hypocritical lies that govern the whole operation. It's amazing it hasn't been worse than it is because uh, Zionists do own everything. They now own every media outlet. Um, if you look, there's four, there's four justices, Supreme Court justices that are Jewish. The White House Chief of Staff is Jewish. The last White House Chief of Staff is Jewish. Barack Obama's mother was Jewish. It's just, all this kind of stuff is so overwhelming when you consider this, the small number of their population. Every newscast, every newspaper, every big fat magazine in the, in the supermarket, Time, Newsweek, Washington Post, every false flag operation that you can name from Watergate to 9-11, they did it. Zionists, but not Jews. But it is a racial thing. You know, Jews are smart. They just, they gotta, there's no way to talk about it other than being negative, because you're talking about evil thoughts, evil actions, and a, uh, a talent for those, that kind of inclination and the impulse to be underhanded and hurt people. And the strategies that are laid down for the cause of the race no race does that, other than them. There are some unified races in the world, but they don't do specific acts. You can say that about the Muslims, but there are very few Muslim extremists. If that was the case, you would see that they were really terrorists. You don't know how many cab drivers in New York would be blowing up their own cab with bomb. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. This is a racist thing. 
real racism. And um, that's why the AL, ADL exists and the JDL and all these, these interference publications that if someone really becomes prominent with their voice against Zionism, they spend money to shut them down with lawsuits and bribes and they try to get them, they bribe people that work with them to get them out of the, out of the way, even if they do something small. Like Sanchez on, on the news, he just, he said one off-the-cuff comment got fired. Uh, that woman that was in the White House press corps that got fired for, just because she was mad about Palestinians getting killed. And <clears throat> so if someone's in a prominent place and they say, like Glenn Beck, when he did his uh, episode about the Federal Reserve, gone. Gone the next day. So, it's, it's bad, and it's the main thing. And it's why Alex Jones is full of it, because he does not address it. He will, in a kosher way, criticize Israel, but just always in the pot, the mixed pot of criticizing everybody else, without giving the appropriate focus and weight to the control that the Zionists have over the most important aspects of the problems of America. America is a Jewish country. America is a costume that they wear. Just, just keep perpetuating their power and their control and their acquisitions. What's happening now to the people of America is the final stage of the plan. Read up on what they did to the Soviet Union. They just killed people. Once they really, really wanted to make that move, they did it. And that is what it looks like they're going to do to us. And I, I just want to find a way to stop it. Like, and I'm not talking about violence. I've got to figure out a way just to get people unified, to recognize that this is one race that hates all of you. Us talking about what they do is not racism. It's addressing their racism. It's, it's amazing that it hasn't happened. In a way, the Zionists are right when they laugh at everybody because it is ridiculous that people don't do anything about it. Because we could outnumber them. We don't have to participate in their plan. We don't have to bank at their banks. If we could just have a publication that identifies, here are the, the Jewish companies, let's go to anyone that's not one of them. Do not watch television. Pool investor money of Gentiles and make a new television station that's exclusively for all of us and not Jewish controlled. Things like that could be done if people were unified. But one of their, their tenets and their game plan is to divide and conquer. And they do conquer. They do divide. One of the real problems is, is that people just, they hear someone like me talking like this, they just, they remember their education and they think that's not true. You know, that sounds like something Hitler would say. They don't know that Hitler was funded by Paul Warburg. Kuhn and Loeb. <laughs> Z you know, everything in Nazi Germany, what we see, those black and white movies, that was all just putting on an act for the camera so that the propaganda people could pitch their story. Oh, and they did. Uh, it's just such a complex topic and I'm trying to break it down. I want to do another video about what I learned about the Civil War. And uh, I actually want to make a video about holding on to respect when you're dealing with this. Because offending Jewish people is wrong. And there are a lot of good Jewish people. The crazy Zionists are what you what you gotta deal with. And their ideology comes from the final stages of the, uh, the bad parts of their religion exploded into the Kabbalah and the mysticism of that and the, the feelings of uh, writing a license to yourself because you're a member of that race to hell with everybody else kind of ideology. Good Jewish people don't think like that. They might have the same talents and the same kind of mindset and they might be really good at arguing and they might have some of the same inclinations of <clears throat> what you would call Jewish traits that you might not like. But you don't see them killing people or, you know, going around 
working with the criminals. They just wanted to live their life with their family, practice their faith. Uh, so, and I, that's what I'm about. I mean, I'm that guy who does the Jew Watch, that's an amazing website. I mean, you want to read about all the real history that is covered up. The thing that's suspicious about Jew Watch, I can't believe it's it exists. Because <laughs> they're good at shutting down websites that... And some websites are suspicious that they're online because, say, wait a minute, that might not be true if it's actually there. But he's been thrown off of a lot of the video sites, and they've gone after him pretty good. And he just stands his ground and, and puts the, the truth out there. And this really is the bottom line of so much of the crime that people just do not realize. People just do not realize how bad this really is and where it really comes from.